Hello everybody, welcome back to Rebel Science. This is Genome Toolkit Part 2.1, Identifying, Fixing and Testing a Bug. In the previous video, we wrote our first function and we've added it to Genome Toolkit. Even though that was a very simple algorithm to help us search for patterns, which we also call Kamers, and it seemed to work correctly, we actually had a bug in it. Now in this video, let's see if we can identify a problem in our for loop logic and see if we can fix it. We will also discuss how bugs like that might end up accumulating a lot of errors during the runtime of our application. Let's go back to our code. So that was our test file, main file where we test our code, and that was our genome toolkit class file. So we only have one algorithm here so far, and there is a little bug in it. Also, I've added a few printouts here, so when we execute our code, it's easier to read. So let's try running this code now. And as you can see, it's exactly the same output as in our previous video. We're saying, hey, we want to see how many times this camer appears in this sequence. And the answer is five. Now let's go back to our genome toolkit. And I'll give you a hint. There is an issue on the line eight. Okay. So the issue is in the range. So no matter how long our camer is, how many nucleotides it has, in our case here, it has two our for loop is only dependent on the length of a sequence. So let's say our camer is three, it will still execute, let's say eight times. If our camer is five, it still executes eight times. And we will now illustrate why this is actually a problem. So the best and the easiest way is to introduce a print into our for loop. And what we want to see is we know that this part never changes. And we also know that this part does change. This is a slice from our sequence that we get. And we're comparing that slice to a camer. So what I will do is I'll copy this part and I want to see what's in it. I'm just going to print out what's in that slice. I will also just add a little cosmetic things like this. We're going to say, hey, I want to see if this is actually equals to our camer. And again, camer will never change because it's the same camer, but this part will change because we are sliding through the sequence. OK, so let's go back to our main file and let's see if we can execute this now. So we can see that we have a sequence AAA, and then we have a Kamer AA. Now we can see that our algorithm takes a slice of a string and compares to our Kamer. That's why this part never changes. So we can see that the last scan it does is GA, and then the end, GA is not equals to AA. Okay, that's easy. Now let's try experimenting and see how our algorithm actually works with Kamers of lens three. Okay, now it's length two because only two nucleotides are in it. Let's add another A. Save the file and let's run it. Okay, see if you can identify a bug in our output. There is something strange on the last part. We can now see that the last comparison we did, AAA to GA, even though the last part was GTA, which is this. So we can see that our algorithm did something called overscan. It overscanned the sequence, which it should not do. So a little step back. In this case, it does not break our algorithm. We still get a correct output because we're only interested in the integer value, how many times the camera appears in the sequence. Where this could break is, let's say we want to actually save a list of these values OK, and we want to pass those values on to some other algorithm in our pipeline. And if the algorithm expects a three length camers and all of a sudden one of them is two length camer, there might be a problem. Our algorithm might break or just produce incorrect results. Let's keep experimenting. Let's now add fourth nucleotide to our camer and let's run it. Now we can see that the last test had to be TTGA against our Kamer, but it did two more overscans. And one is one position overscan, and this actually overscan twice. And of course, if we can add five, okay, five has even more overscan. It's supposed to stop at our last five mare, okay, but it stops at two mare, two length Kamer. So let's go back to our code and see if we can fix it. I'm going to return this to original position. Okay. So let's come back to our algorithm and see if we can fix this part here. 
we need to take into account a length of k-mer as well. So our for loop not only depends on the length of the sequence, but also depends on the length of a k-mer and does not overscan. So the trick is to actually use the length of the k-mer here. So we're going to say length of a k-mer that we're looking for, but also it needs to be wrapped into, we're going to subtract it, of course, and it needs to be wrapped like this. Okay. So now we have fixed it, but before we are going to run it, we're going to do something very interesting. We're going to visualize it before we actually see the results. And we are going to see if we can predict the output. So our for loop on the line eight should execute less times if the camera is long. Okay. The longer the camera, the less times the for loop on line eight is going to execute. So let's actually just introduce like um, a comment section here and let me copy and paste our experiment. So what we're going to do here is, so we're going to say our sequence is of length eight and our camera is a length two. And let's copy this part here and we can actually turn it into a formula that will help us to predict how many times the loop will run. Okay. Not loop, but loops. Now let's let another line here. And we can now replace numbers. Okay, so the length of the sequence is, let's do the brackets like this, is 8, okay, minus, and we have another set of brackets, and length camer is 2, so we're going to say 2, and this value never changes, minus 1. So what is the result of this simple equation? Loops 7 times okay so it loops seven times but before we actually run it let's actually make sure that our test sequence is the same length so we're going to copy and paste here and let's now run it and we can see that it's doing one two three four five six seven so we did predict the amount of loops we're going to run by using this equation okay so now let's do another experiment let's increase the length of our camera to three and add another nucleotide here, of course. And now we're just gonna swap this three here because we're swapping the camera length, now changed to three, we're putting it right here. So we are deducting one, yep. So it's two minus eight is six. So now we should loop less and hopefully we're not going to see that overscan of our sequence. And of course we need to add our nucleotide here and let's come back here and because we're using three mares, we're gonna use the same three A's here. Let's now run it. Okay, so the result looks better. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it was seven, now it's six, and we predicted the output six. And we can actually see that the last scan is this part of the string, which is great, which is exactly what we need. We can also see we're looking for triple A, and it's only in our sequence once, and we found one. Great, let's come back here and do another one. Let's do the length four. Add another nucleotide right here, save, change our formula, again, eight minus four minus one. So this should loop only five times to adjust for the length of both camers and the sequence. Now we're gonna add another nucleotide again. Okay, this looks really, really good. Now we are only scanning one, two, three, four, five. And again, this is an amazing way of actually predicting your code. You can always turn your logic like this into some kind of a formula and just replace the variables and you should be able to predict some of the outputs you're gonna get. Okay, so this is it. We identified a bug, we found what it's actually doing with our code, with our results, and we fixed it and we confirmed that the fix works. And again, you can always come back and visualize your kind of test scenarios like this. Okay, so let's conclude. Bugs like that might be very hard to find if the algorithm is much longer and much more complex. In the case of our algorithm, this bug did not produce a bad outcome, again, because we only cared about the integer. We did not care about the camers, okay? In some other cases where you actually need to manipulate the data that algorithm returns, you have to make sure that the list of camers, let's say it generates and returns, is correct to avoid to have something like this. Now imagine our algorithm generates this list of camers and passes it on to some other algorithm to work on. And you can see that it will expect all camers probably be four nucleotides long. And here we have some cameras that have gaps in them. So there is a gap here, there is a gap here. And of course you can imagine if you're working on a huge amount of data and then you let it run for a day and then there are some inconsistencies like that and you get the results back, they will be completely incorrect. 
okay? When implementing your algorithms, try using Python debugger on every step of your code. Try visualizing what is happening in your variables by printing them out, and just like we did here, okay? Use a very simple sample data, like what we used here, when you run your code. Don't write the whole algorithm and test it after. Write a line of code, test it, write another line of code, and test that, etc. So one other way you can try making sure your code is bug-free is actually using pen and paper. You can try drawing or writing a simple sets of kind of tests uh, with expected inputs and expected outputs and see if your logic actually works on the paper. Then you can turn that kind of set of tests into actual tests when you write your algorithm. The test coverage you will come up with will most likely depend on the level of experience, not only in Python, but also in the logical thinking. Python also has testing functionality built in, it's called unit test module, you can look it up. But this is beyond the scope of this article, we might look into that in our future videos. Alright, so this is it. I hope you enjoyed going back to our code and actually finding a bug in it and fixing it. This will become even more important when we write multiple functions and we wrap them, we connect them into a pipeline, into a bigger algorithm that uses all of those functions as a part of the bigger algorithm. We have to make sure that every single function algorithm we write actually returns a correct output that is then passed on to a next algorithm and a next algorithm and a next one. And in the end, we have proper results. Some of our algorithms will take some time to run. And if it takes time, we have to make sure we don't waste that time by producing incorrect results. Feel free to follow Rebel Science on all the social medias now listed on your screen. Join our Telegram and Matrix community. And there is also an article version of this video available on rebelscience.club and on Medium. Until next time, Rebel Coder, signing out.